everybody happy homebrew wednesday it's brew day hey everybody today we are brewing our doomsday dunkel i've uh, been talking about this for a while we have our whole all grain setup going here um we're not doing the entire brew video but i want to show you a couple of things real quick just what we're working on today and um we've already heated up our our strike water and in fact we're done with the mash so i wanted to give you a quick look at uh the finished mash we heated the water to about 160 or so i had a couple of problems with my thermometer this one wasn't calibrated correctly based on my other thermometer so i broke out the lab thermometer that i got with all that lab equipment that i showed you that one day and we're using that to make sure that we have the correct temps but um we we mash a little high i wanted 152 it started off at 156 uh, and after about 10 minutes or so just letting it stabilize it came down to 154 that was good enough for me i decided to leave it at that so this is the end of our mash here after about 60 minutes i want to just take a nice look at that our doomsday dunkle we got some chocolate malt in there, giving it the nice color. You can see at the top here, it's got that nice sugar sheen at the top. I love the way that looks. It smells delicious. So I'm going to give this a little stir. And I'm going to just double check the temperature. Because I'm curious to see where we ended on temperature. I'm trying to keep very, very good notes since this is still an early... Um, an early all grain for us. So I'm just gonna take a look at what we ended here with our temp. And uh, you might notice that we decided to stick with a normal mash for this. We, did, we didn't do the decoction mash. Now I was talking about possibly doing a decoction and we never uh, really talked about my brother and I how to do that and we decided it'd be just a lot easier. It looks like our mash ended at about 150. So that's pretty good. We've got a nice range of temperature there uh, from 156 all the way down to 150. We did lose a few degrees. Um, actually, it was mostly 154 down to 150. So we lost a few degrees, but that's okay with me. Um, so you might be asking, what makes our Doomsday Dunkle Doomsday? And that would be the powdered zombie brain that we're going to use for the... For the uh, boil. So I'm just going to pop in our mesh uh, into our sparge water, some powdered zombie brain, let that sit for a few minutes. And uh, that'll be our sparge water. It's already heated up. And while that zombie brain is reconstituting in the water, we're going to recirculate some of this and settle the grain bed. Uh, so I, I'm just going to do it right out of here. Uh, and then I'll end up putting the hose back on there to do the, the rest of the um, sp uh, sparging. But um, just for now, just to clear it up, I'm going to use this new one quart, uh, what are these called, colander? No. Uh, ladle? Ladle, thanks Mike. i uh, just going to use this one quart ladle that I got to settle the grain bed. Nice color on that. I'm going to keep doing this until it's clear, and then we're going to finish draining. Then we're going to mix in our sparge water. You guys know how this goes. So we'll come back after we're done, and I'll show you a couple more things before the end of the brew day. See you in a few minutes. Okay. Yeah, um, as you can see, we're pretty close to the top of the pot there. We, um, I'm going to have to adjust my beer smith calculations. It was asking for, uh, I think, a total of about 8 gallons or so, um, post or pre-boil. And as you can see, this is a nine gallon pot. It gets it pretty close to the top. We were watching it kind of like hawks, making sure we didn't get any boil over. And uh, managed to keep it pretty steady. But I'm wondering if this is really gonna boil off that much in an hour. I'm shooting for 5.5 .5 gallons, and uh, that, that's pretty much, what, two and a half gallons? Right, Mike? Two. Two gallons of uh, boil off. Not really sure if that's gonna happen, but um, we'll see. You might have noticed I was draining into my bucket. The reason I was doing that is because I'm trying to calculate my <laughs> trying to calculate my uh, beer smith equipment profile a little better, and this has measured gallons in there, so I can see exactly how much uh, we're putting into the pot and how much is coming out and all that stuff. We're at our one hour boil mark right now, so we just the boil just started. I'm gonna put our 60 minute hop addition. That is uh, one ounce. Of, I forget the name of these. It's a uh, search. 
<laughs> what were these called? The Howler Tau. Um, and then it starts with an M, but I can't remember how to pronounce it or what the word is. So we could pop these in. Hopefully it doesn't cause a boil over. It's our hop edition for 60 minutes. We got a couple more hop editions. And just kind of watching that a little as the hops go in. All right, I think we're okay. Uh, we have one more hop edition at 15 minutes for aroma and, you know, yeast nutrient, boral flock tablet. So we'll come back to show you a couple of those things, just to tell you how we're doing at the end. Our first runnings were 1.070, which was pretty high. At 140 uh, degrees. At 140 degrees, right, Mike? Uh, so I didn't do the calculation to figure out what that was. And then our second runnings were closer to 1.020, and that was also around 140 degrees. So we'll see after the boil off what we uh, came up with, and I'll give you a little wrap up of the Doomsday Dunkel a little later. See you in a few. All right, so we're pretty much done with our boil, and as you can see, my hops produced a single hop this year. This is first year Cascades, and we got one hop out of the deal. That's the only hop that grew. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pick it, and we're gonna put this in as a zero minute hop addition. It's not gonna do anything. I don't expect anything to come from this one little hop, but um, just for the sake Sorry, we got some dirt bikes going by. Uh, just for the sake of using it, our, our one and only hop. It smells pretty good. Mostly kind of grassy. So, and to end the boil, we're going to put our one hop. Stick that guy in there. Whoa. And we're going to uh, chill this down now. As you can see, we got quite a bit of uh, quite a bit of wart left here. I'm pretty sure this is going to end up being more than five gallons. Uh, we'll find out. Otherwise, our doomsday dunkel is finished. We just have to chill and uh, pitch the yeast. I'll probably come back to show you the yeast, the yeast pitching and then uh, say goodbye. So, see you in a few minutes. bees came out to play they smelled that sugar and man did they go crazy so we're done with the uh, for the day we ended up with almost six gallons due to some miscalculations with uh, beer smith about the uh, you know equipment profile so I'm gonna have to play around with that but we're gonna stick with almost six gallons I'm happy with that we'll probably stick a blow-off tube on there just in case uh, we actually ended up with uh, a pretty good hydrometer reading or gravity reading, we got a 1.056. So that was, I don't have the uh, recipe with me, but I'm almost positive that's exactly what we're shooting for, which is pretty cool. Alrighty, so we have a little issue, and that is that my brother's iPhone ran out of space right at the end there when we were making our brew day video. So I wanna do a quick recap, just let you know uh, how the brew day ended. And there's actually a lot of, uh, interesting stuff that happened after that so I want to mention all of that um, all right so first of all I was about to in the in the actual brew video I was uh, just about to pitch the yeast and what I was gonna say about the yeast is that I was using Y yeast 3068 for my dunkel uh, for traditional uh, dunkel Weizen and the pack the uh, the smack pack did not inflate I smacked it the night before, I woke up the next day and it was not inflated. So I smacked it a few more times thinking maybe I missed the nutrient packet. And um, it, you know, it seemed like it swelled a tiny bit and uh, when I shook it and put it near my ear, it sounded like stuff was happening in there, sizzling and whatnot. And frankly, I didn't have any other options. So we pitched that 3068 uh, Y-Yeast and kind of cross our fingers and hope for the best. Unfortunately, it's been uh, nearly two days now since the brew day, and there is no activity at all. There's no bubbling, no krausen. Uh, yeast, probably dead, I guess. Uh, I've had a, you know, a bunch of people tell me I should have made a starter, and I probably will always do starters for now on, but 
honestly, even if I did do a starter, I don't know if it would have made a difference. Uh, it still would have been a dead pack of yeast, um, and I still wouldn't have had anything else to put in there. So, um, kind of on a whim, I decided to contact the place where I bought the yeast from. It wasn't a local homebrew store, it was an online place, and, you know, they were nice and everything, but they basically told me that it was kind of my own fault, and whether or not I really agree with them I I saw where they were coming from you know I was contacting them to see if they could send me overnight like a quick uh, replacement so I could pitch it and they um, they said you know the order was about three months ago so it's been three months since I ordered it and um, they said that's a long time for the yeast and they don't know what I did with it once it got here if I put it in the fridge or not um, they said even if I handled it properly and everything I still would have had to do it uh, step it up two times uh, with the yeast starter for it to have been a proper amount of yeast for the, the batch and they were basically giving me all the reasons why they couldn't give me another pack for free uh, and you know what are you gonna do so I um, I had a backup pack of dry yeast in the freezer that I was kind of the in the back of my mind the whole time I was like oh I could always pitch that if I have to well, I took a closer look at it, and the expiration date was 2006. Yeah. So, I was stuck with this batch of uh, beer with no yeast on hand and no way of uh, getting any. Luckily, now my local homebrew store is like about 45 minutes away, which is why I didn't just simply go and get a new pack of yeast right at, at that moment. Um, luckily, uh, someone I know was going to be down that area, so they're picking up uh, a pack for me today. So I will have, by 6 o'clock tonight, I will have uh, a new pack of 3068 that I'm going to pitch, and I'm going to keep my fingers crossed, hope that the batch is still okay, and that nothing awful happened with it. Um, so that's one problem that we were having. The other problem is that uh, my brother brought the the batch to his place and he put it in the basement where as I've told you before it's nice and cool and we get a nice solid 64 63 degrees and it stays there uh, it's nice and steady well since our last batch my brother had to get a dehumidifier for his basement because it was real moist down there and he was finding mold growth and stuff so he had to um he had to put a uh, dehumidifier down there. And if you know anything about dehumidifiers, you know that they kick out a lot of heat when they're working. So it's now not so cool in the basement down there. And we pitched at about 66 degrees. And by the time he got it to his place, he was telling me that it was up to 70. And then the next morning it was up to 72, 73. And uh, he put it in an ice bath and he put, you know, cold towel over it, wet towel, put the fan on it and everything. And he was saying it was still reading at 77 degrees. Um, at which point we decided the thermometer, the uh, stick-on thermometer on the bucket must be, uh, must have gotten wet or is reading incorrectly because we can't see how it's 77 degrees sitting in an ice bath. So, um... That's the other problem. We don't know. We, I, I have an extra thermometer here that I'm going to give him later today to put with the uh, bucket. The only good thing about this whole pro temperature problem is that there were, you know, there weren't any live yeast working in there anyway, so it doesn't really matter if it got a little too hot. Um, hopefully, by later tonight, we'll be able to stabilize the temperature, pitch the yeast, and you know, keep our fingers crossed. Hopefully, our doomsday dunkel won't. Uh, won't be the end of us <laughs> we're, we're hoping that it all everything turns out okay so that's all the bad news there was a lot of bad news uh, now for the good news up until the point that we were pitching our yeast the brew day was fucking excuse me <laughs> the brew day was awesome it, it was perfect uh, we had a nice simple brew day no major problems we were very relaxing it was so much better than the first time we did all grain this was you know as you saw another all grain um 
is really relaxing. I was shooting for um, a original gravity of 1.053, and as I said in the video, we actually ended up with uh, 1.056 which is kinda cool. I don't mind a little uh, above what I was shooting for. Um, the... what was I gonna say? <laughs> I'm a little uh, forgetful at the moment. I'm drinking coffee too. I'm not even drinking beer today because it's kinda early that I'm making this video. Right, the, um, the brew house efficiency. I calculated the brew house efficiency and the um, the first time we did all grain, I got about I think it was 72 percent efficiency. And this last time with the dunkel, I calculated out to like 86 percent efficiency, which is a pretty huge jump. I was really happy about that. Um, actually, it might have been more like 80. Oh uh, yeah, maybe more like 82 percent, 83 percent. I don't have the book with me. Um, so a huge jump in efficiency. I ask myself, well, what um, what caused that that better efficiency? And I think I'm not positive about this. I don't know, but I think it could be because of the water salts. I um, you saw I put the the zomb powdered zombie brain. That was actually water salts. I, I used the easy water ca calculator. Uh, you know that I got the water test done not too long ago. So I decided to treat my water with uh, water salts, Epsom salt, gypsum, um, and uh, calcium chloride I think I used. Um, and I think the addition of that may have helped with efficiency because it really jumped a lot from the last time. So um, yeah, uh, really great efficiency. The only problem with my brew day was that my equipment profile on Beersmith needs to be tweaked. Uh, obviously I, I told you in the main part of the video, excuse me, that um, that the blah, 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 oh God. <laughs> that we ended up with like 5.8 gallons and um, we would have had even more if I didn't leave some of the sparge water and the mash ton so I have to dial in my equipment profile a little better in Beersmith but other than that everything worked out really well our original gravity was good mash temperatures were good uh, you know, really just this yeast and the yeast problem and the, you know, the basement temperature, fermenting temperature problem that I mentioned. Uh, so anyway, that is the wrap up of, and I know it was kind of a long wrap up, but I had a lot of, a lot of updates for you. So, um, that is, uh, that is the Doomsday Dunkel. I'll keep you updated. I'll tell you how the, uh, repitching works out if it starts to ferment, and, uh, obviously we'll have tastings and all that stuff as the uh, brew continues on. So keep your fingers crossed for me. I'm hoping that it's going to be okay. Other than that, um, do you like my new opening sequence? I, I put a little effort into that. It's a, I know it's kind of long. Do you think it's too long? Should I make a shorter version of it? I, I do like it though, um, but let me know what you think. And um, also one other major question I have for you. What's the difference between mash efficiency and brew house efficiency? Because I feel like I, I was calculating the brew house efficiency with a brew house efficiency calculator online, but I feel like I'm not really sure if that is brew house efficiency or mash efficiency, what the difference is, how do I calculate mash efficiency as opposed to brew house efficiency? Is there a calculator for that as well? I couldn't find one online, uh, but I wanted to do that. Um, I think that pretty much covers it, so I'm going to let you guys go. This was a long video. Hope you enjoyed it. Happy Homebrew Wednesday. I'm che uh, doing cheers with coffee, but hey, sometimes that's the way I have to roll. Have a good one, guys, and I'll catch you next time.